are talking the Sawyer Massacre. And this is actually a unofficial Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan film prequel. It is written and directed by Steve Merlow. Now, fan films aren't something I normally kind of review. I have reviewed one or two of them uh, in the past, but genuinely speaking, I don't think it's fair of me to level uh, criticism against a fan film because obviously uh, all of the kind of the films that you can get that's probably the, the hardest to kind of really be too critical at because it's not made for a financial gain even the kind of the lowest crappy B movie uh, is made to make a kind of some type of money normally um, but fan films especially ones that are based on kind of an existing property they're unofficial they're not allowed to kind of like uh, profit from it necessarily so obviously this is purely done either for the, just because they want to make a film for the love of the, because of the material or maybe as a kind of a calling card um, to kind of a uh, potential kind of like studios who maybe want to kind of look at this as a kind of uh, preview of talent so to speak. And I think the gold standard of, pop, of fan film is probably the Never High Cologne movie and I would say um, the Sandy Carolla Batman Dead End. They to me were the kind of the, 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 kind of the best ones out there but there is plenty of them now. And it's not something to say I would normally review, but the director actually emailed me and asked me if I would have a look at it and, and give my thoughts, and I will. And I will be um, critical, but I also will be trying to be fair in the fact that I, I understand the limitations that, uh, that a, uh, kind of a movie like this kind of puts on, and uh, I, I kind of won't really pick it apart too much for anything that, that is uh, due to a lack of budget, because I understand this is going to be a very kind of... Uh, uh, low budget movie in that respect. So how I'm going to approach this is a little different from my regular style of reviews. Uh, what I thought about is I'm going to tell you what I, where I feel this movie exceeded my expectations, where I felt the movie essentially met my expectations of what I would expect from a fan film uh, produced style movie, and where I felt the movie could have had some improvements. So let's talk about what I think, I think where it exceeded my expectations but first I'll give you a brief synopsis um, essentially focuses on a, a variety of groups of people it's set in the kind of the uh, the 1960s and uh, we have a variety of people turn up at this infamous area in Texas and are lured into a particular house that uh, has these obviously somewhat kind of disturbed people inside who are wanting to capture uh, anyone who walks by to essentially keep the meat shall we say we, we, we have a number of different people who are who are lured for whatever reason into this particular area and have to deal with the consequences so that's your basic plot premise so let's maybe talk, talk about what i think where this movie really did exceed my expectations for a lower budget uh fan film produced movie the thing for me i felt where this film was the strongest was actually on its technical aspects this movie, for a, a movie which is produced not by professionals, is actually very, very well shot. Um, there's a variety of different kind of like uh, camera angles, filming techniques, different kind of like, you know, pan, zooms, things like that, that are all kind of like uh, very well shot, I have to say. And that with, if you're watching this, if, you, if you're purely, purely looking at it on a technical level, you'll be forgiven for thinking this is not a professional movie, because it does look, I have to say, it's filmed so well uh, it really does feel like it, it has been filmed by someone who really knows what they're doing using the decent equipment and it has that kind of professional look to it. And it's not even just the kind of the, um, the actual way this movie's filmed. I think editing is excellent as well. Uh, it's put together in a way where I feel it, it, it possibly is the, uh, you know, the transitions are, are, are very smooth. They kind of make sense. They're in good, they're in good places. I think the, um, uh, the scenes aren't kind of too long, for example, things like that. So the editing I, I feel was good. Sound design, lighting, again, all to a high standard. I've watched movies that are not fan films, they're meant to be commercial films that have uh, terrible lighting, terrible kind of audio, kind of things like that. So I was extraordinarily impressed with a movie that it doesn't have like, you know, the professional kind of standard that you would expect. Nonetheless, do a professional job in regards to the technical aspects of this movie. I have to say as well, the location shooting and the set design was 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 very impressive. I do feel this movie um, it, it's kind of set and it's kind of this dusty kind of like out of the way rural area with a rundown kind of house looks excellent. And I think the um, the location shooting here was was great and the kind of the the set design within that. You know there are some budgetary restraints. Don't get me wrong, 
but I did think it actually it, it kind of captured that kind of dilapidated old feel of this kind of out of the way cat you know in its kind of time uh, dilapidated area that you can imagine what, what the Texas Chainsaw Massacre family would actually kind of like live in. So all that was was all very well done. So props to the kind of filmmakers for that. So where did I feel this movie was kind of about where I was expecting. Okay, so. Again, I, I'm not going to be too critical with the kind of the the, the, the more budgetary kind of uh, um, areas, but let's talk about the effects and the kind of the uh, the gore and things like this. The effects is limited. Um, they, there's quite a high body count in this movie, and we do get a reasonable amount of kind of blood and things like this, and there's a lot of it. I and mean, we get obviously the kind of the, uh, the the leather face mask and stuff. It's kind of about where I would expect for a fan film, a movie that isn't going to be professionally financed, but I think it still looks, you know, of a reasonable quality for a kind of a lower budget kind of movie. There's not anything uh, particularly gratuitous. There's not anything that's particularly technically in regards to the kind of the effects worked here. But if you were to kind of see this kind of level of effects on a kind of a lower budget straight to DVD, B movie, you know, I think it, you've, you've, there's plenty of movies out there that have this kind of level of effects and things like that um, and, and kind of gore. And I have to say as well, the acting is about where I would expect a kind of a fan film uh, to be. I mean, I had a look at the cast on IMDb. They've all got, you know, pictures on their profiles. They're obviously either uh, amateur actors or people who are wanting to kind of go into that kind of field. And I feel the acting was kind of a mixed bag. It's kind of why I put it in the kind of the, the middle section. Because I do feel there's, there's some... Uh, there's some work here that was done pretty well. Uh, we have our kind of one of our family members is called Rex, and he's this kind of guy who tried to talk people into kind of like coming into this kind of uh, the house of death, so to speak, by various kind of different uh, promises of what they'll find there. And I thought his character was somewhat tongue in cheek, and his performance was kind of quite uh, a kind of a um, uh, kind of a fun kind of performance, and I quite liked his kind of. His character and his depiction of him, so he was pretty good. There's a few other kind of like smaller roles. I think some of the kind of the, the actual the female victims here were all pretty good, uh, giving some kind of believable performances and kind of you know more sort of serious roles. Whilst the kind of the Rex character uh, was a bit more sort of tongue in cheek, so they, they were all pretty good. But there are some kind of like um, some some roles here. I thought we were on the weaker side. Unfortunately, our male lead. Uh, what to me was a little bit unenthusiastic. I didn't really feel he he really uh, had much charisma on screen. Um, and we have a couple, two of his mates don't get a huge amount of screen time, but they were okay. But I didn't really feel they they left much of an impact. There's a, a smattering of other kind of characters that are a little bit of a mixed bag uh, as well. So maybe where this movie I uh, felt fell a little short of expectations that you would expect from a fan film. To me, the biggest issue I think here is the writing. Um, there's a, a few issues that I have with it, and I, and I say the writing because that's something that you could, that's not gonna cost you anything. It's decisions that are made whilst writing a script uh, that I felt maybe could have had another, another look at. So for a start, I don't know if this would, the idea to make it a feature length movie I don't know if it was the uh, the best idea, and the reason for that is the, the the there's not a lot that happens story wise here. It's just a kind of a, a a bunch of people ultimately ending up in this house and getting attacked by its residents, and there's not much more to it than that. We get precious little characterization from our our group of characters. Now, if you compare this to maybe the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You know, that's a, that was a lower budget movie in the 70s. But I felt you got a a good sense of who the characters were. And I didn't think that was the case here. We do get a little bit of time with them at the beginning. But I never really felt like I got to know them. The other decision here is, I think there's too many characters. We got our three kind of uh, guys. We get these two girls. We get a neighbour. We get them. We get two separate kind of like uh, lots of kind of other people that kind of turn up as well. I understand that the decision here to have a, a high body count, but um, I, I felt there was too many. There was too many in a place to spin here, and it also causes some logistical problems, which I'll, which I'll talk about in a minute. There's too many characters here, so I think it could have diluted the kind of like the, the characters that we, we could have should have focused on. I also think this maybe could have been a 
half an hour movie and I think it would have benefited from pacing because I felt that there's just not enough story here and they really warrant this um, a, a feature that sort of can, can keep you into There's just not enough going on. But uh, other, other issues I have with the writing. So uh, th there is some kind of decisions here that don't really make sense. For example, we are meant to believe this is an out of the way rural house, right? And then we have uh, people, some people go in this house, some people wait outside. But there is a definite discrepancy in the passage of time because we seem to have these um, people out of time, people outside the house, sorry, must be waiting for hours for the people inside because they seem to spend a lot of, a lot of things happen in there, but we still got people waiting outside. And also they're kind of like, there's chainsaws and there's screaming, but no one's, there, you know, no one who's literally waiting outside the house can hear any of this. So again, some kind of like, mm, that doesn't really kind of make sense in a kind of a, in a realistic kind of like manner. It just doesn't, you know, it doesn't quite work. So I think there's some uh, some issues with that. Now, the, I think the first original movie, its 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 biggest asset was the fear of what's coming, the fear of kind of what's lurking. Uh, even though that movie doesn't have a huge amount of um, you know actual gore on screen, what it did have was this terrifying kind of like atmosphere, and that is not here. It never really feels like this imminent sense of dread that it's kind of building. It's just kind of there. Um, I also think having so many kind of characters and so, you know, there's a high body count here. But where we don't really have any kind of like hero shots of kind of gore and stuff, you feel like you're going to get shortchanged with lots of kind of like off-screen deaths or just kind of blood splurting out. And I think that could work if you had less of them. You know, if you had let, you know, less people kind of getting chopped up, you wouldn't feel shortchanged in regards to kind of like the uh, uh, the fact that it, this really doesn't show you a hell of a lot. Um, I mean, there's a few kind of prosthetic arms and things, and but you know, I think that because there's so many people, there's so many victims in this movie, we never really feel like we get to see much. And I think that that is a problem there because you have all of these people kind of getting. Killed. And again, I understand there's budgetary issues with that one, but the way round it would be to not have quite so many characters and everything, it will give you the characters that we do have there more room to breathe. So I think this movie on a technical level is proficient and kind of well made. I think some of the kind of the, the acting and the kind of the uh, so the effects work are kind of, you know, there are thereabouts for what you'd expect for a low budget film. But the area for me where I would say this movie certainly has its kind of like, uh, um, would have been better maybe if, if, we, if we hadn't look at, look at the script and kind of how that was kind of the, the basic of, of what's going to kind of be filmed and i would have made it a short film i would have made it half an hour. I, didn't, I think having the decision to have it a feature length i think ultimately um just kind of dilutes what it could have been which i think would have been a punchy little uh, half an hour um uh, short film which i think would have been would have been a little better so anyway, that's my kind of thoughts on it so it's kind of a you know it's kind of a, a little bit of a mixed bag uh, and I, but I do think there is certainly some potential here for some uh, some work going forward. Um, so have you seen it? I'm not sure this is out yet. When it is out, I'll try and remember to put a link in the description so you can actually watch it. Uh, let me know if what you've seen, what you've seen, makes you want to watch it, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.